QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Forward contract for speculation that foreign currency will weaken reversing entry. Let's get into it with Intuit. QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our multiple currencies practice problem. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down, selecting the open windows list. We entered a forward contract in the past and prior presentations. We then did an adjusting entry and then we did an entry to, to close out the accounts payable side. Now we want to think about the adjust, the reversing entry and the need for a reversing entry in order to properly record the breakout of the gain or loss on the currency differential uh, in the proper periods. So let's go to the reports drop down company and financial take a look at the balance sheet standard standard balance sheet we're going to change the dates up top and the customized reports from 010121 to 1230 then okay and the receivable is in dollars so that's going to be fairly straightforward down here in the payable we're going to be paying in the future 5000 foreign currency units in this case pesos and that exchange rate or the need for it is going to be what makes the pay, the payable side of things the interesting side. So we're going to be double clicking on that item. We put this on the books in the current exchange rate when we when we first recorded the transaction. Then we did an adjusting entry at the end of the period for the $200 to make it correct as of the cutoff date when we're going to make the financial statements. We then recorded the payment of the payable. Well, before we did that, we, we then had a transfer of the currency to, from uh, the checking account into the foreign currency. So we had the 5,000 payable. Then we paid off the payable and we did this in 2022. So if I change the date up top, then you can see that the checking account basically went down. And we still have $200, however, in the payable, even though we've paid it off at this point. So if I go back up into that and I, and I take a look at the two dates here, that's because we entered this adjusting entry here and then when we when we paid the bill uh it basically recorded the full difference between between the the time that we put the forward contract on the books and the time we paid it off it basically did that for us and so in other words if i go back to the home page over here if we didn't have the adjusting entry in the middle everything would have worked out meaning if we entered the bill and then paid the bill QuickBooks would have then recorded the difference in the two exchange rates at those two points in time and recorded the proper gain or loss on the income statement for it in that time period. However, because we had a cutoff so that we had to record some of the gain or loss in the prior period, some in the current period, we then had to enter an adjusting entry. And then when we did the, this pay bill over here, we doubled up on part of the adjusting entry. So the way to account for that is to do an adjusting and then reversing entry. We can also see that on the income statement side of things by going to the reports drop down company and financial profit and loss standard income statement and changing the dates from 010121 to 123121. We see the $200 uh, here. This is the adjusting entry we made. And if I go to 2000 uh, X2, uh, 123122, we see the 150 in the following period. In other words, if I double click on the 150, this was when we entered the bill. When we entered the bill, QuickBooks did the full adjustment, meaning uh, if I go into to Excel here, the full adjustment for the two periods was the 200 and the 50 or the 150 that we need. But we need it broken out as 200 loss in year one, 50 gain in year two. And QuickBooks just put the 150 in here in year two which is the difference between the the first rate when we started the contract and the ending rate so that means in we made an adjustment as of 12 31 21 which is correct now if we do the reversing entry as of january 1st 2022 then we'll have the 200 dollars that will net out against this 150 and we'll be correct we'll have the 200 in the first period and the 50 in the second so that's what we'll do. We'll just do our reversing entry. It's going to be great. So I'm going to double click on this 200 and we enter this as of the cutoff 1231. We're simply going to reverse it exactly in the following period. Now I'm going to try to use this reverse item here. It's got this nice little reverse item. I've been manually inputting these transactions, but let's, let's go up top. I'm in the main section and hit reverse and see what we have. 
And so notice that basically did it for us, which is nice. It put us into the to the next day, 1122, and it just did the reversal for us automatically, which is going to be the exchange gain or loss, which we credited. And it said if we reverse journal entry one, that's good, gave us a little memo. And then the payable is the debit, and it brought over the correct uh, the correct vendor here. So yeah, that's a nice way to have it. You just hit the little reverse button. I haven't I don't typically do that. I've been manually inputting this thing and just wasting a couple seconds of my day. So in any case, let's go ahead and save and close this. So we're gonna save it, close it, see if it does what we would expect it to. And then let's go on over to the balance sheet. If we go to the balance sheet, now the payable is back down to zero. So that's what we were hoping would happen. And that's what did indeed happen. So if we then go to 010122 to 123122, we see the, the activity that brings it back down uh, to zero so it's going to net out that's what we expected let's see if it breaks out to the proper uh, breakout for the income statement into the correct time periods because these are the temporary accounts that are going to roll in to the income statement so if i go to year one 123121 we still have the 200 here so that looks good that ties out to what we had in our excel worksheet and then we need the 50 in year two so let's change this to a 22 and uh 12 31 2, 2. and now we're at the 50 we're at the 50 because if i double click on this we have the reversing entry we entered as of 1 1 22, and then we entered the bill which recorded the full amount but if you net the two out that brings us to the 50 dollars, which is what we were looking for now you might say why don't i enter this 200 dollars as of 4 1 22 because this is really kind of wrong for i mean we kind of it's kind of not not correct until for one 2022 but we don't really we want to make the reversing entries all as of the same day usually so and that means that we're going to reverse them as of the same day it'll be kind of incorrect until we enter the bill but it will be correct periodically it'll be correct when we make the financial statements in this case at the end of the year that's kind of the standard kind of philosophy for the adjusting and reversing entries so that we could make the financial statements correct periodically either monthly or yearly in this case yearly and also logistically make things as easy as possible so the data input uh, is as easy as possible to do and it's easy as possible for us to know where the adjusting and reversing entries are so let's now go to our trial balance the good old tb reports drop down accounting and taxes take a look at the tb trial balance changing the dates from 010122 to 123122 this is where we stand as of this point in time we're going to be needing to uh to uh, deal with or uh, have the maturity of the receivable side of the transaction we shall we'll do that next time it should be an easier process because this is the side of the transaction that is in the u.s dollars therefore not having to deal with that kind of foreign currency exchange problem with it